Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Maggie. I'm 26 years old and I'll be starting medical school in the summer of 2021. I'm still deciding where, so I have no idea where I'll end up. And if you haven't already, definitely be sure to check out my blog. It's lifebymaggie.com. I have tons of free resources. I share my personal statement, extracurricular descriptions, MCAT tips, all that good stuff. And if you're applying this cycle, definitely download the free pre-med calendar. It has all the important dates and details that you need to make sure you are ready to go this application cycle. And basically all the things I wish I knew the first time I applied because there is a lot to know and this covers it all so check that out. Anyway this week I'm going to do a two-part series all about letters of recommendations. So in this week's video we're going to talk about the different types of letters, how many letters you should get, who to ask, and then how to ask because I know a lot of you guys stress about that. I get questions all the time so we'll go over those. Then in part two we're going to talk about the timeline as far as when to ask and when you actually technically need them and then how to upload them because I know there's tons of questions on that. And lastly, a Q&A from your questions from Instagram that you guys asked about this topic. All right, so let's start with different types of letters. First off, there is the committee letter, which you've probably heard of or maybe not, but this is completely dependent on whether your school offers it. So my undergrad school, Mississippi College, they did not offer a committee letter. It wasn't an option in the first place. But if you see on the MSAR that this is preferred, there is a certain table where you can look at and it says committee letter preferred or it just says accepted for all three of the types. If you are able to do a committee letter, you should since some of them say preferred. So I went to a grad school and they offered committee letters, but there are also requirements. So you might have to have a minimum GPA. For my grad school, you had to have been going there for a certain amount of time or had like a certain number of hours, say 17 hours or something like that to even go through that process. And then you had to go through interviewing. And anyway, your specific school will have all that information if they offer it. But just know that even if the school offers a committee letter, you still might not meet the requirements. Also, they might not do it for non-science majors or if you're a non-traditional student, maybe your undergrad institution offers it, but three years later, you probably can't go back and get that committee letter. So the second type is the letter packet. AMC says that the letter packet is a packet or set of letters assembled and distributed by your institution, often by the institution's career center, and it may include a cover sheet from your pre-health committee or advisor. And then it's not like the committee letter exactly because it doesn't include an evaluative letter from your pre-health committee or advisor. So basically it's similar to a committee letter, but not exactly. And it's still dependent on whether or not your school offers it. My undergrad school, again, didn't offer this. So I went with individual letters and that's the third type. This is what it seems like just going to your professors and individually asking them for letters and then getting them uploaded to AMCAS or ACOMAS or the Texas app. All right, so how many letters should you have? I think four is a great number or five if you can get five strong letters. I wouldn't recommend more than that. And also keep in mind that every single school is different. So some schools have a maximum number. For example, Albany College, they only accept four. So even if you had five, you could only give them four that you think are best. Other schools, they have a maximum of six, but I wouldn't suggest more than five. I think you should keep in mind quality over quantity. So it's not about getting as many as you can. It's about just getting quality, strong letters of recommendation. So what this means is that even though you might not be uploading six or seven letters to AMCAS or wherever you're applying, it's definitely okay to ask for more letters than you need because that gives you a little bit of a buffer. You might be expecting one professor to say, yes, you're for sure thinking they would write you an awesome letter and then your heart might just be crushed because they say no. So ask for more than you need if you have more options than that. And then you can choose what you think the five best would be after you actually have them and they're ready to go. You never know what can happen between asking and actually having them uploaded. So ask for more than you need if you can. All right, who should you ask for your letters? Obviously you wanna ask somebody that you have a good relationship with so they know you fairly well and they can speak to your qualities. Also, probably you want to ask professors that you did well in their class, so got an A or a B. Also, I think if you struggled a little bit in the beginning of a professor's class, then overcame that, went to office hours and worked really hard and then it did a lot better in the second half. Even if you got a B, maybe not a C, but even if you got a B in that class or that professor knows that you worked really hard to overcome that and you know, like all that, I think they could write a really amazing letter for you because they know how much you worked to overcome the initial struggle kind of thing. So it doesn't have to be professors that you've got an A in. But ideally, what you would like to have is two science letters. We'll go over what science means after. One non-science, then one from volunteer or work, and maybe one physician letter. The physician letter is required for DO schools, and then if it's MD schools, then you could have it or I don't, it's not strongly recommended or anything like that, but for DO schools, definitely have a physician. You have, it's required to have a physician letter. Okay, so what qualifies as a science letter? Think BCPM, same thing as the science GPA. 
it's biology, chemistry, physics, or math. And then as far as non-science, anything outside of that. So humanities, like government, English, and all those terrible classes that I can't say. <laughs> or psychology and sociology, those would be non-science. So here's the letters that I ended up getting. And I will say I didn't get a non-science letter. And out of the 28 schools that I applied to, this only prevented me from submitting a secondary application to one of those schools. So the letters that I had when I applied to medical school, I had two science letters and one of the science professors was I had her in two classes, genetics and cell biology or something like that. And I also did research with her, so a great letter to have. The second one, he was my advisor, plus I had him in Organic Chem 1, Organic Chem 2, and I did the Smacks Chemistry Club, which he was a part of, so knew him really well. So those are two great letters to have. And if you have an advisor plus a professor or research plus a professor where they know you from multiple different things, then great people to ask. So the third letter that I had was a work experience. She was the woman that I was the caregiver for, and that was a great letter to have. And then the last one that I didn't upload to ANCAS, this was just for my DO applications, that was the physician that I was able to shadow. And I was able to shadow him right before COVID hit, so I don't know what I would have done if I hadn't been able to do that. So I only had three letters for my MD school applications and four for my DO. And like I said, there was only one school that that combination prevented me from applying to. All right, so let's talk about how to ask for letters. So the three options obviously are to email them, call them and ask them in person. And I know asking them in person might be pretty nerve wracking, but I think it's good if you, well, a lot of you might be in online classes right now, but in the future, hopefully if you're watching this and things are back to normal, asking them after class is a totally great time to ask them or during office hours and things like that. But if you have a lot of anxiety when it comes to asking them, then you could just, you know, use email as your excuse to get that over with. But I will switch over to screen share on my laptop and show you guys all the email templates and how I ask and things that I give them and all that good stuff. So let's switch over. All right, this is the email that I sent my professor and I put requesting a letter as a non-traditional student because this is three or four years after I had taken her classes. So I was incredibly nervous that my professors would have no idea who I was and forget who I was. So basically the first half of the email is just reminding her who I am, what classes I took from her, when I graduated and then requesting for her to write me another letter because she actually had the first time. So she had already written me a letter and just asking her to write me one again. Some things to include. Well, first off, if you're a non-traditional student, I would do the same. So <laughs> let them know who you are and tell them the classes you took and things like that so they can remember who you are. But if you had a great relationship, actually, I mentioned this on Instagram and somebody commented that they had requested a letter six or seven years after the fact and their professor still remembered them. So don't be too worried about this. And first off, you just have to ask. So it doesn't hurt to ask. And you'll probably be surprised like I was. They were more than happy to write me a letter. After that, you can request, politely ask them to write you a letter and then make, be sure to include when they need to have it done by. So I said June 30th because June 30th is the point when the applications get sent to medical schools and I need my letter by the time secondary apps are ready to be submitted. And then the one thing that they will probably ask is, well, there's a few things they could ask for. They could ask you for a CV and or they could ask you for your personal statement or other things too. Those are the two things I was asked to provide. So here's an example of the CV that I provided for three of my letter writers asked for this. So my name goes here. I will include this a way that you guys can download this, but just making it look professional and putting work experience when I had it, what I did, volunteer, and then extracurricular activities. And then I put academics, which yeah, you can include any or all of that. This helps them write their letter. So that's why they want that. And as far as the personal statement, like don't wait until it's done to ask somebody, ask for them to write the letter first, because they may or may not ask for it. So you can you don't want to delay asking if you're still writing your personal statement. Ask first, then if they ask for it, then you can be like, okay, I'll send her to this when it's done. Okay, so you've asked your professor for a letter. They sent yes, and you may or may not have to send them your resume slash CV and or your personal statement. So that's two things you might have to send them after they say yes, and there's two more things you also might have to send them. So first is your letter request form, and this is relevant for ANCAS for applying to MD schools. And I'll show you about that in a sec, but the other is the writing guidelines. So if you have somebody writing a letter that may or may not have ever written a letter for somebody applying to medical school, this is what I send them. And I do not send this to my professors because they write letters all the time. You don't need to tell them what to include. They know. 
So the guidelines looks like this, and I just include a link to this. For example, the work experience letter that I got, she's probably never written a letter like this. So I sent this to her because this would be really helpful for her if she's never written a letter. But I don't think you need to send this to your science professors. I get asked all the time, what should I tell them to write? They've written tons of letters. You don't, you don't need to tell them what to write. But if they've never written it, then you can include this. Or if it just makes you feel better, you can just include this anyway. This is an email template of all the instructions that I send them. So this Alice, that's not her real name, but this is what I send her to just tell her how to upload it and like do all her stuff on her end. And then I said what it has to include her letter and stuff like that. I just got this from one of the websites. And then I attached the letter request form and the guidelines for writing the letter and then just gave her these instructions, just laid it all out for her so she knew what to do and said, if you still have any questions, let me know and I'll figure it out. And as far as the letter request form, this is for AMCAS. So there is information which I will link and this just tells you how to get that form. You'll go into your applicant portal and once you have said that you're going to get a letter from so-and-so, there'll be a thing that you can click and download the PDF and then you just print it out, sign it, and that's what you send to your letter writers. And this information is here. So that's the four things that you might send to somebody after they say yes. Resume slash CV, personal statement, guidelines if they've never written a letter before or if they're not sure what to write, and then the letter request form for empty schools. That's it. It's kind of a lot, but not that bad. And this template with all the all this is included. So you'll have that to kind of figure out how you can instruct them. Also, note this is very not professional. I say LOL. This is because I had a good relationship with her. If you're sending this to like a physician or somebody that you shadowed or a professor, don't make it this casual, but <laughs> you know your relationship and what kind of way that you can email them. Just wanted to note that. All right, so that wraps up this video. I hope it was really helpful for you guys. Definitely be sure to check out part two because we're going to be talking about the timeline and how to upload them and then answering all your questions from Instagram. And as far as the timeline goes, this one was so confusing to me the first time I applied. I told one of my letter writers that the deadline was two months before it was actually due just because I didn't understand how the process works. So check out that video, follow me on Instagram, like and subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.